I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today it's a cold, rainy day, so I thought I would take a look at this product. This is a neat product that allows you to tune and calibrate any fuel uh, sending unit and gauge that you want to. You can mix and match fuel senders to any gauge, and you can also tune properly matched uh, senders and gauges to read 100% correctly. Uh, I put a different fuel tank in this Willys that you see behind me, and so the sender does not match the gauge, and so I'm gonna install this in between, and we'll calibrate it and get the fuel gauge to read correctly. Originally on these Willys trucks, the fuel tank was right underneath the seat. This is the old filler location. I need to get a new cap for it still, and the fuel tank would be sitting down here. But now, this truck has a CJ7 tank installed down underneath it. You can see it right there. And then the filler cap is now right here on the back. There's a uh, custom adapter in between the cap and the fuel tank to make that work. But because it has a CJ7 sending unit and the original instrumentation, the fuel gauge does not read correctly. If I turn this on, the fuel gauge reads full all the time, even when the tank isn't full. So using this meter match device, we'll install that in between the sender and the gauge, and then I can calibrate the gauge to work with that other sender. Let's take a look at what came in the kit. Some instructions, a little screwdriver, and this little black box. Looks like I need to open up the box and we'll take a look what, what's inside there. We have, a, we have an adjustment and three buttons as well as the spots to connect the wires from the positive, negative, the gauge, and the sender. The meter match needs to go in between the sender and the fuel gauge, so I need to pop the fuel gauge off so I can get to the wiring on the back of it. Luckily, this entire instrument panel pops out with only four bolts, so I'll get these bolts taken off and then we can get back to the back of the gauge. I have the instruments pulled back and the wire that's on this center post right here, that's the one that I need to pull off. That's the sender wire and that's the one that's going to now go to the device and then from the device I'll run a new wire that connects to that terminal on the gauge. I need all new wiring running in and out of this box so I've wired up two wires for the positive and negative. The green wire goes to the gauge and the yellow wire will come from the sender. There's also a fifth port here and that is for a low fuel alarm. I don't have a uh, light that I want to light up when I'm running low on fuel so I'm going to leave that one empty for now. I have everything hooked up temporarily outside so that I can show you how this works. It would be a lot uh, harder to show you the button presses once I have it mounted so I'm just going to use this temporary wire to show you how this works. With it hooked up right now, if I turn on the power, it does go back to the same spot it did before, and that's because I haven't calibrated anything yet. There are a bunch of different ways to calibrate this box. One is completely manually without knowing any set values. Secondly is by using the values uh, that you know that your sender uses, say if it's 10 ohms when it's full and 80 ohms when it's empty, you can use the built-in ohm values uh, and select them within the device so that you don't have to actually calibrate it using your own sender. Another way to do it is to just get resistors that are of the resistance uh, that your sender is going to be putting out to calibrate it. And another way is to use a decade box like I have here. Using this, I can dial in any resistance that I want to. But for right now, to make it easy to start with, I'm going to try to choose these built-in resistance values as a starting point and go from there. Step one, power on the meter match. We have the rotary switch set to zero. And it says press and hold the save button. The LED will illuminate. While the save button is being held down, I want to press the up button the number of times shown in the table. We're gonna set the top resistance first, which is 10 ohms, so I'm going to hit the up button two times. One, two. You see it blank there. Now, 
If we want to turn it to which setting we're going to save, that was a high calibration point. So I'll turn it to one. There we go. Now for the neat part, I will use the up and down arrows to actually change where on the gauge I want this high point to read. Using the up and down arrows, I can move the gauge up and down. So since I'm setting my high point, I want to move the gauge all the way up. There we go. And then I'll click save. I'm going to turn the dial back to zero. Now I want to set my low point. So I'll push and hold the save button again. While the save button is being held, I want to hit the up button a number of times for my low point, which is going to be 90, so that's five times. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm setting my low point. I need to change the dial to position four. One, two, three, four. Now with it at position four, I want to use my arrows and set the gauge all the way to empty. And you can see I can dial that in to make it read exactly where I want it to. And then I'll click save again when it's where I want it. And if I set it back to zero, the gauge should be roughly calibrated to what the sender should be. Now wire length is going to change your resistance slightly, so you'll want to do your final calibration with everything fitted in properly. So make sure that you mount this device where you can get to these buttons and get to the knob. And if you really care about fine tuning your gauge, uh, make sure that you do all of your calibration with the final wiring that you're going to use. I have the meter match mounted over in the glove box now. And for right now, the only thing I don't have hooked up is the sending unit. And that's because I have it plugged into the decade box. I'm going to show you how that works. So if I turn the system on, you can see that it reads full right now. And then as I turn the decade box, I'll turn the resistance up. You can watch the gauge go down as I turn it up, just like the tank was emptying. So it's a good little test of the system, make sure that it's going to work right before I finalize the wiring and button everything back up. And I mentioned before that if you want your gauge to be completely accurate, you will need to readjust everything and fine tune it once you have everything hooked up finally because these wires are going to add a slight bit of resistance and the exact wiring that you're using while it's on the road will be slightly different than how you're testing it on the bench. If you found this video useful and want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.